Soviets and Soviets to the Red Army, how y'all doing? This is Con Ulrich. And I'm Rangru, hello, hello, hello. And folks, today, kind of kicking off our weekly coverage here of uh, Steel Division 2, we have a real uh, banger going on over here on Shechedra. And Rang, who, who is here and what are they bringing to the fray? On left hand side in blue, we have Biscuit playing as the 9th Guards Cavalry with a flatline income. And the right hand side, we have Petal Phase playing as the 3rd Armor Division with a Maverick income. So, I mean, I know people out there are going to be like, dude, this is a mirror match, but technically, I mean, we have Soviets and Americans. This is really more of a Cold War thing. In fact, yeah. I, I feel like it's a Red Dragon call out. Is that <laughs> what it is? Yeah, Red Dragon. Yeah. So, um, but we're going to see early here, we're going to see a couple of M8 Greyhounds down to the south. I Actually, I do like this. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, no armor whatsoever, even against the 45 mils, but good vision, good fire support, and it's a nice kind of quick, you know, standoff support weapon here. Yep, it's, the speed really helps in terms of getting to the front line first and blowing stuff up. There are 20 tank guns who are being set into position, so they could probably rain on that Greyhound parade and the Stuart as well. Well, I mean, and that's the thing, that that metal rain is always going to be kind of a, a bit of a devastating issue here or there. Mm -hmm. uh, Especially up north with the mortars. Yes, that's exactly what I was going to call out here. The 60 mil mortars, which continue to be such a kind of devastating piece of equipment here. Uh, and they definitely need to be utilized. All the Kazakh troops, mm -hmm. how's it going to face off against the kind of early engineers and the LMG rifles? The American infantry, especially in third armored, is pretty good for what it is. I mean, it's all bloody semi-automatic rifles, but you don't get a lot of them. So you're definitely going to need a bit of extra fire support against that Kazaki spam. And as you can see with the supply network or command network set up, he's getting a very lovely to start off infantry on all this infantry. Yeah, I mean, part of me kind of wonders if we're actually even going to be seeing any kind of aggressive play to the north. If this is more of a stopgap measure by the Americans, I can't help but feel like down to the south they're going to play to that kind of armored strength. I mean, geez, yeah. they already have a dead T-3476. Was that? No, that wasn't from an AT weapon. What the heck was that from? I don't know. I don't know. But down south, that jumbo is... That's going to be such a pain in the ass for the Cossack Division to kill. As they have no proper heavy anti-tank really, especially in the thing that can penetrate a bloody jumbo. Even shooting the side of it with those 45 mils will be a difficult task. It certainly will be. It certainly will be. I mean, and to, wait, we're gonna say that. Is there aggression to the north? There is... Yep, actually we've seen some minor aggression to the north. The Kazakh troops are moving through their jump-off points, and this is kind of what I think Metal Face was fearing. Mm -hmm. Even as we see another kind of column yep. moving on in, but we see a couple of Shermans coming the other direction. So how does this look? I mean, we're gonna have... Kazakh troops with PTRDs against Shermans yep. inside of a town. How many? How quickly do you think that we reduce to husks? I think the Shermans will probably, you know, survive for a little bit and then mm -hmm. eventually get shot or d disabled to a point where they're completely useless. This is very good so far for Biscuit. He he's very close to totally taking over his town and really on a map like this against Third Armored, playing to the town is going to be his best strength. Yep, he does certainly seem to be in it for that biscuit. But um, looking overall, I mean, that second wave of Kazakh troops, and again, with that, was there an Osnats in there as well? Yeah, an Osnats in the back. Uh, I think there'd be more than enough to kind of push them out. These engineers are not going to get mm -hmm. there in time. The Osnats is definitely a very good play because that rivets uh, Bazooka. can definitely knock out those Sherman tanks, which get a bit frisky. Speaking of frisky, we've got Metal Phase pushing across the middle here for a half track and a shirt, taking quite a bit of ground. By the way, I'm kind of mildly amused by the fact that we have MCHOS behind the front line and this jumbo is kind of going to this valley of death mm -hmm. as well. I'm you, but bigger. <laughs> Actually, I'm you, but with three C's. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and, and shockingly enough, actually, we're seeing PPSH uh, Kazakhs being forced back by LMG rifles and a half track in the center. Is this. No, it's just reordering themselves. Okay, that's a better option. Yeah. Yeah, they're a little bit, not, not in the best position being behind enemy lines, they're going to be taking a bit of a morale debuff because of that. But, maybe Biscuit can reconnect the lines, he's got some Kazakis being brought in to retake that forest. I'm also kind of very surprised by the kind of armor deployment that we're seeing here overall. Um, more or less actually, I mean, from Biscuit's side of things, and not because it's outmatched by any stretch of the imagination, but more of... I, 
I feel like in the ninth guards cab, you kind of commit to really going the T thirty four route. You go to you commit to the to the M trip route. You don't really tend to go for both. Maybe maybe I'm incorrect there. Yeah, no, no, you're you're, you're kind of correct. You usually see people usually just stick to the M trip tanks. I find with ninth guards, but it seems like Biscuit wants to have a little bit of extra tank firepower by taking more cards, and especially against an armor division, that's not a terrible idea. But as we're seeing right now, that jumbo, he's a. Uh, Oh, I thought he's engaging the other Shermans, but he's engaging the T-34. So this would be a perfect time for those, like, Emchers just up north to try to... Aggress. You know, ...outflank that Jumbo, yeah. I mean, you can definitely get a rear shot on that if you do some good maneuvering. P-51 comes in and just wipes out, like, two or three squads of the Kazakhs in the middle. I mean, these guys aren't cut off anymore, but neither are they in a fantastic position. No, they're really gonna. I think they're gonna reap for probably some extra armored support coming in from the north before <laughs> maybe making a bit more of an aggressive play. Yeah, we do have a 37mm AT gun nearby, but it's not in a good position. It actually no. has no line of sight towards the tanks, but if he just moves it a little bit, he would. Definitely true. Oh, the jumbo is uh, being engaged at point blank. And our biscuit, you need a. You need to move in closer, but at the same time, the Jumbo is having a bit of a hard time penetrating the other Shermans. No, but at the same time, though, he still has the M8 sitting behind. He still has, yeah. he had, the AT gun as well. So, I mean, that was a definitely good opportunity for him. And honestly, even if he pushes the M-trip back into the trees, now you have to be worried, yep, and the Kazakhs start to get taken off, picked off one by one. Even with this smoke in the way, it's not going to be enough. Yeah, that, that jumbo is just an absolute pain in the arse, and really just smoking it off, try to block its line of sight, is really all Biscuit can do. Unfortunate. Where he could have flanked it, but that, yeah, that but opportunity I mean, has and, gone. And where's the fun in that? You don't want to flank them, you want to kill stuff. That, that's what this game is for. Um... But yeah, geez, oh, he's he, gonna he, rush Nostanaz into the smoke! This is not gonna be a good idea. Come on, unload. No. No, it's too far. <sighs> and now he's being seen by the M8 and the M4, so this is going to be a rather swift conclusion to our Ostnats. Oh no, I think he might get a shot. It's too far. No way. No Shoots. way. Wait he didn't a get second. kill. It's like 200 meter range. Yeah, I know. It was one of those things I was looking at. I was like, wait a second. This is not a Panzer Faust I was thinking about here. I think no. that's why my, my brain is all wired in that direction. <laughs> Interestingly, we actually have an M4A176 up gun behind the front line. It's kind of interesting. I think he's he's quite nervous about huh. his concentration of armor in the middle, and he should be. Look at this wave kind of rushing yeah. forwards. Probably brought in in reaction of the app. But it's a really good push here from Biscuit. Once again, trying to play in the CQC areas in the forest really going to be his best strength against 3rd Armoured. And if he can just get more Kazaki troops in there, some Osnasses, or Bazookas, and also just all his tanks, he should have a decent time holding that area. I mean, up north, in the town... Actually, Metal Face is holding out pretty well. I think it's really due to that uh, Mortars. Uh, but Mortars run out, and they're down to their last 10 shells apiece. Yeah. And you've got Mortar Bikes from uh, Biscuit, which is definitely going to help uh, change a tide, so to speak. Mortar bikes. More to the point. It, it feels such like a, like a <laughs> Warhammer 40k thing to kind of say. <laughs> it does, actually. It's like a speed freak thing. It's like such an yeah. orky kind of idea. Um, now, we are seeing reinforcements being brought in here to the center, as well as the mortar over here trying to drop some rounds. Is he looking for... He's looking for something. He's smoking off the retreat path? Interesting. Huh. Uh, I think because he's uh, got his Stuart coming in no, down south. Stuart's staying on the, on the southern arterial. Oh my god, what? this is the most lopsided engagement ever. Whoa. What the fuck? That was a side shot right there. He didn't get the angle in time. No, that's a front shot. I'm zooming on the Sherman. That was 100% a front shot, Khan. What the f the oh, armor but... penetration in this game is goddamn black magic, I swear. Oh, uh, well, he, he bought the premium ammo, so that was the oh, thing. Oh, god. Yeah. Goddamn Peter in Sturridge. Well, it's an American thing, like, what do you expect? Yeah. Uh, but he does go down. I mean, order is restored mm -hmm. to the universe. Meanwhile, the, the Jumbo just continues to just lob rounds downrange at these other Emchas. Um, yep. I'm not going to do diddly squat. And I actually, 
We have actually, ooh, there's another M4 up close and personal, but he's not really seeing anything. Mm -hmm. It's the same that Biscuit doesn't have any anti-tank infantry yes. in that forest, because he can just run up behind that jumbo, yeet a grenade, or bazooka, and down goes the jumbo. Uh, well, meanwhile, in the middle, we're seeing armored rifles actually trying to go and take out something, but apparently they took their stupid pills this morning because they can't hit any kind of armored vehicle there. Nope. Uh, but this M4A1 is sidling around behind. Like this MP51 making a, a bombing run? Yep. Skipping a bomb. There was a, and the log. Ooh, and the log took out the rhino. Not the rhino, excuse oh, wow. me, the jumbo. Oh, wow. It did. That's, that's but pretty good. I think that I think that was an HP kill. I don't think that was actually like a legitimate kill. That was an HP one. Yeah, I, I have a feeling. I mean, that jumbo has been shot to hell and back. He's probably pretty low on on that invisible HP bar. You know, I, I am a little bit concerned right now for Biscuit for the next ten minutes because this is Maverick. This is third armored. This is this is the time you should probably gonna start seeing some. Huge swaths of material coming in. Actually, in fact, we have a jumbo yeah. coming to the north, and several swaths yeah, and of infantry. Yeah, this is this is really going to be the main or break part of the match. If Metal Phase can keep up the momentum, if he can, and it looks like he can in the middle, if he can push pretty heavily, uh, he should be able to secure the match. So yeah, yeah, Biscuit needs to really either try to take his northern town or try to secure the central hills. Actually, the major concern here is that he's got to take out these three armored vehicles. And we have this bazooka team kind of rushing on in. And the, I mean, obviously the bazooka team's not going to do squat, but now as these T-34s kind of idle back to the valley, that is an interesting placement there. Mm-hmm. Right, interesting... gonna... Yeah, I'm not thrilled by it, but the M4A1 does go down from the northern place to MCHAS across the river, so well done there. Huh. That was a good flanking shot. Certainly was. But we got um, some off map being brought in up north for biscuit, so maybe that will change the tide, allow him to actually capture his whole bloody town. I was, well, I was going to say actually, you know, the third armored really should be more of a Hydra as like a sign here. So you just killed one for M four M one, and immediately mm -hmm. what happens? Well, we see two more getting brought back into the <laughs> south. Maverick income. Exactly. Exactly, and I'm actually I'm really surprised by the amount of armor that the Ninth Guards have been able to bring on. Excuse me, Ninth Cav have technically been able to bring on in. Yeah, they're usually not a super heavy armor division, but they have a decent amount of A phase and B phase cards. No C phase tanks, unfortunately, for them. So later on in the match, it won't be looking pretty for them. Oh, by the way, we are going to see a uh, Soviet push here in about 35, 40 seconds as the artillery oh, starts yeah. coming down. More Kazakhs being brought on in in the anticipation of exploiting that. Um, but he's got to be careful because he's just lost a center flag as... That, that... Honestly, in retrospect, I'm very surprised that he was so... panicked or so so... Oh, he pulled back all those yeah. tanks. Yeah, you never see people actually fall back properly like that. That's, that's quite surprising. He's going to be relinking, I think, with his backup hampshires and then maybe do another push, or maybe try to push up north with him. Uh, I don't know, but we are going to see a bomber going after the... Yeah, that was a very weird ordinance decision. And both are being called away. That is so strange. And as the artillery comes in, the third is actually making its own quasi push, looking to envelop the town. <laughs> Might actually be able to take out this off map should he oh. get eyes. Hell yeah, biscuits running for the hit. Well, I say hill was really running in town, trying to save his off map's life. But the off map charge. Did a decent amount of damage, but Biscuit isn't following through with the counter-offensive while everyone's pinned down, which is a huge mistake. Yes, indeed. And while even these half-tracks oh. are going to get taken out pretty quickly here, not exactly the most robust frontline units, they are mm -hmm. still quite good at kind of seizing that territory. Yeah. Yeah, using half-tracks against a Soviet player is always a really difficult task with just the amount of goddamn anti-tank rifles they have. Sure. 
True backs. We're seeing another charge actually happening across the, the central saddle as four half tracks kind of go on forwards. Even as both of our 76 millimeter up guns are going to start engaging, but there's a log coming the other direction. This has actually been quite a back and forth kind of alternative here. Mm hmm. Real like uh, something out of that rocket run? No. He, he, he chose he didn't even, poorly. Didn't even shoot his rockets. I think he lost line of sight at last second. Either that or he's suddenly afraid of this P 51, which I guess I kind of would be too. Yeah. Six An American seconds. Mustang is really fast. Holy crap. Bit too fast, too. <laughs> but with even one burst, in fact, how much did he use? He's, what, like, 100 rounds? And already at that mm -hmm. point, he has already got black smoke trailing out. Now can he get behind for the coup de tar? Yep, and here is that coup. No, there's no way he's getting away from this. Wow. Oh, there we go. oh, that's a heartbreak. <laughs> no, really get this other light coming in up north. Ooh, by the way, Metal brought his in his own off map. I can practically have a 155 going the other direction. Huh. There we go. That's what really Metal needs. It's just, he doesn't need to capture the town. He just needs to keep it... That's a neutral state, so to speak. And by dropping off map artillery, definitely helps to keep that fact. And he's doing... Well, he was doing a bit good earlier, but now it's back down to 13 11. He is still technically running, but usually with a Maverick deck, you want to be running really hard by this point. Well, not for nothing. We have the Soviet infantry is being forced into, let's say, a rather unfortunate position. In fact, these these half-tracks are getting surrenders. That's how bad this is. <laughs> and the front lines collapsed. Some classic SD44 play here. You can just Russian half-tracks in to surrender. Holy moly. Russian half-tracks? I think you mean American. Ah. Uh, um, <laughs> but uh, just like that, I mean, the artillery kind of falls on nothing, which is, mm -hmm. this is not how they drew it up. You can see it right now. No. More Kazakhs being rushed into the front. But that is asking for trouble. And that's, that's how you do it off-map artillery, bro. You rush in and get surrenders. Biscuit was definitely a little bit too tame after dropping his off-maps. And he really paid for it quite dearly. Well, right now, though, too, Biscuit is paying the price down south as well of his earlier temerity. Um, or rather, timidness. Temerity would have been, a rather, would have been much more preferable. Um... Down to the south, we're seeing Kazakh troops being pushed back on these slopes. Yes, for the moment, they've pushed them away from the front side, but there's a curve that's happening around the south. Mm -hmm. Those BIR troops will eventually win out, in my mind, against those guys in the open. So, Yeah, I've pulled a semi-automatic rifle fire. Amer American infantry is so... so scary. One thing I am surprised to see is the utter lack of any kind of anti-air really like i, oh, I understand yeah. i That's understand that people don't really focus on anti-air that much it's not really in vogue to worry about mm -hmm. but that would have helped us significantly in kind of keeping some of these troops at arm's length yeah that's it's funny you know we usually complain about no artillery in matches but here we have no anti-air for change I mean, for the third armored, you can kind of get away with it to a certain extent, because I feel like your air power is is relatively strong at keeping other divisions yes. at arm's length. And 50 cows and everything. Exactly. Exactly. But we are seeing the cost, yeah, definitely... actually, right now. Ooh, no, this would be perfect. I thought this was going to be awful, as all these Kazakh troops were going to make their way outside of this artillery, but that is not going to be the case. Oh... It's perfect, and he has one half track ready to go. And so it begins. Yeah. And god damn. God damn. Yeah, off map. And you see, just only, what, three rifle squads in that town? Metal phase is put some biscuit back. Well, and you can see the immediate fear, too. I mean, metal uh, biscuit. Remembers exactly what happened last time, which is why you you saw the F key being hammered in your mind. Like you, didn't even, you, you didn't even have to look at the players <laughs> playing it. And the last barrage going in. This is this is a very very skillfully utilized um, off map. Yeah. 
Rustin and the track to get their surrenders. Or at least the pin. Mm-hmm. Down to the south, there's a now a... Um, I'm not entirely sure how to call it. It's not really an armored fist, more like an armored middle finger, as a couple of 75 mils and a 76 mil are just going to kind of hold the line. And now look, anti-air, speak of the devil. Huh, finally. And the last barrage is going to actually hammer the half-track to the north, though. Here it comes. Yes, we total huge amounts of friendly fire here. But it doesn't matter. He keeps him at arm's length, he wins. That's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. And he has the jumper at the northern edge of the town, just plinking away at the supply line. And once again, with Flame of Guards, there's not much you can do to it in a uh, ground uh, game level. He can bomb at you over lag, which might actually work. True, but like lag overall, it, it happened unfortunately all too late. Mm hmm. Um, and yeah. Kind of shockingly, that jumbo has no AP shells, so right now he's just plinking away for fun. And he has like 30 AP shells, which is quite a decent amount. He's he's really been hard at work. I'm sorry, I'm just watching this, this pressure down to the southern side here as Soviet infantry comes forward on foot against tanks and is sent away, as the Japanese did after a bonsai charge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is... I, I, I think it's pretty clear to say that metal phase is pretty much secured victory. And he's, he's done a pretty good job of his Maverick income and, you know, eventually getting that breaking point, so to speak, before the 20-minute mark. Well, and this, again, the weirdest thing about this, though, is that for the longest time, Biscuit looked like he had this under control. Yeah, like he, he had an opportunity to take that northern attack with his earlier off map charges, but. Well, he, and just the collection of armor. The opportunity. Just the collection mm -hmm. of armor. I mean, that, that by itself, in my mind, had this ready to go. And then I think I think he got he became afraid of his own success for a second. Yeah. And then Metal Phase got all an American armor out, pumping out the factories, and he just has tanks and jumbos for days. And he has like two jumbos in the central northern position. So good good luck killing them. Well, and now the the metal middle finger in the south has become an actual armored fist. Mm-hmm. M4A1 to 75 mils, just kind of walking point for that uh, 76 mil. Yep. And I would say to the north, we're having a death or glory artillery barrage, but it doesn't seem to be particularly fair to call it that. Um, and I think all the rifles are going to be pretty much out of the way, except for maybe that unfortunate artillery commander by the yeah, time that I artillery think it's barrage comes in. Charge, so he says use them as a frontline unit. But it's the nice thing about having an artillery tank, it's like pretty useful after it's done artillery and Oh no no, I meant I meant the biscuits last one five too. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. yeah, if the tank goes down, that's no big deal. But I meant the artillery commander behind with his uh oh, yeah. eight M ones. And then the Russian commander, the combat rule die. But determined not to let that jungle uh, live. Two. Yeah, we can do that in just a second here. Our track's broken. Uh, how about 2340? Okay. And 3, 2, 1, and go. But yeah, folks, you can pretty much see, I mean, this kind of tends to be the consistent issue over here. We've talked about it since release with the Ninth Guards Cab, is that you, mm -hmm. you kind of really need to be hyper aggressive, you need to be in tight, and you need to commit your armor in kind of a nice, kind of powerful armored thrust. And yeah, you can follow away from that. Yes, go, go for it, please. No, yeah, flatline income doesn't doesn't really work with him. Like, a lot of their units come out only in A and B phase. They don't have many C phase units. You really need a Vanguard or Maverick income to really take advantage of the early game aggression with the Kazakis, the Air Power, and the Shermans. Uh, and the KD kind of shows that. I mean, mm -hmm. Metal Phase uh, definitely taken it to him pretty hardcore. There was one M4A1 Shepherd over here. He's got one, two, three, four major ground kills and a couple of infantry squads. We have a few back, you know, off map claiming six or seven kills by itself with the M8 doing particularly well. I mean, this this is kind of how you want to see the third armored work. Although on Biscuit's side, yeah. you have Zakharov over here that uh, 
quite a few towers to his name as well. Yeah, he did pretty good. And apart from that, nothing else too crazy on Biscuit's side. True. I mean, the one thing that's kind of funny to me is you're looking at how many vehicle kills are on, really, I would say, Biscuit's side against Metal Phase. Um, just the inordinate number of half tracks, and you just keep thinking to yourself, man, the Americans have everything. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, they, a lot of, lot of troops. But, um, any last thoughts there, sir? Uh, none. Well, folks, in that case, then, guys, we will see you guys all real soon. Uh, but for right now, I'm Connell Work. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.